to start, I'm going to take some 0 0.025 lead wire to make it a bit heavier. And we'll do 10, 11, 12 wraps. And then I'm just going to helicopter it off right there. And secure it, finish wrapping it around, push it together. Next, I'm going to take some black thread here. We have our Danville's 140. And I'm going to start that just behind the eye of the hook and build up a little thread base. Next, I'm going to take some black bead chain eyes in size large. And I'm going to tie that in and leave just a little bit of room right in front of the, uh, right behind the eye of the hook there so we can whip finish. And I'm going to push my lead wraps as close to the eye as I can to move that weight up and build a small little thread base back behind that lead and slowly work my way forward locking everything in. Then we're going to wrap back right to about right in between the barb of the hook and the point of the hook. And we're going to take some black Cohen's Carp Dub or the Northern Lights Black and I'm going to pull out a small pinch here and try not to get any of the rubber. And I'm just going to do a small little dubbing noodle here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm building up a little bump for where we're going to tie our pine squirrel strip in and the reason I do this is if you create the little bump right there it'll keep the the strip of pine squirrel from wrapping around the uh, the hook while you're fishing it so I'm gonna grab maybe a half inch three quarters inch piece of pine squirrel here that'll do and what I'm going to do is measure it off the back of the hook there. And I want it to be roughly about the length of the shank of the hook. And I'm just going to gently capture that. And wrap forward right about there, filling in the gap between the lead wire and the bend of the hook to make more of an even profile for that. And then I'll just take some more wraps to really secure it. Pull it back, get it right up against the base of that little dubbing bump I made. And as you can see, it kind of holds the tail up and gives it more of, a, of a, um, a fishy profile. So next, we are gonna take some Spanflex and Small Red. And I like to use this more than I'll use a, um, just a rubber leg on this fly because this, I've noticed, has more movement in the water and it doesn't, it's a little bit lighter. And what I'm gonna do is just take a piece like that. I'm gonna move my thread back towards the tail here. Pull that around. And I'm gonna capture that right on the side and tie it right back against that, that pine squirrel. Then I'm gonna pull it apart a bit and trim it pretty short. Um, I don't want too much of this to be showing. It's just kind of a little bit of a red accent in the back of the fly. Then I can take some of that leftover material that I just used and do the same on the other side. Tying it back against that pine squirrel. Letting it split. Trying to get it as evenly as possible on both sides there. That looks good. And this could give somewhat of an injured look to this leech. Um, just something to catch the, uh, the eye of the fish a little bit. And then next what we're going to do is make a nice dubbing loop here. Wrap that back against the red span flex. I'm going to bring my... my uh, my thread all the way to the front of the fly and I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to grab my dubbing twister tool, put it through, let it hang out for a second, and then 
to hold the thread. We're just gonna move that right there and just keep the thread out of our way. Perfect. So now we're gonna use the Cohen's Carp Dub and Northern Lights again, but now I'm gonna try and get as much of that rubber, rubber leg, leggy looking stuff as I can. And we're just gonna make a simple little dubbing dubbing worm, dubbing noodle, whatever you want to call it, and twist it up. And one thing to remember when using synthetic dubbing like this uh, Cohen's Carb Dub, in any small flies, it's going to add buoyancy and it's going to uh, slow down the sink rate. So be careful when you're adding it to uh, be a little more conservative than you might be with other more natural types of uh, dubbing because this will, this really will affect how fast that the fly sinks in the water. So we're gonna twist it up and then grab our dubbing brush and just kind of really work all that, those fibers out. Grab my hackle plier, grab the, the thread at the bottom of the dubbing brush nip it off and then we're ready to make the body of this fly. So I'm just going to slowly palmer it around and I'm pulling all the threads to the same side if I can. And working it forward slowly. As I'm doing so I'm going to pull all those fibers back and try to trap as few as possible. Slowly but surely, working our way forward and pulling back at the same time. And I'm going to take this to right about the back side of those eyes there, try and leave just a little bit of room to tie our hen in. And then what I'll do is I'll pull my thread behind those eyes and capture the dubbing loop, nip it off right at the bottom there, and then I'm just gonna pull those threads back and make sure I have a good hold on that dubbing. Next, I'm gonna grab my brush and just kinda gently brush it back and give it kinda that leachy, buggy, nasty, carpy look. And the cool thing about the Cohen's Carp Dub and the Northern Lights is it has some red to it. So it kind of blends in well with those little red, red legs, whatever you want to call them that we tied in right in front of the, the pine squirrel. So that looks good. As you can see, we're starting to get that buggy, leachy kind of look to the fly. So next I'm gonna grab some India Hen and Olive and I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to tie it in from the tip of the hen here. Tie it right on top. A couple gentle wraps, make sure it's facing the way I want and then secure it. Wrap it up to the eye. I will take a small brush and just kind of separate those fibers before I wrap it. I've noticed that helps it keep them from getting too captured in there. And then we will just hold our hackle, try and pull it back so those first wraps are facing the right direction. And slowly work our way around trying to wrap it in front of the previous wrap as to not trap too many fibers as we move up. And as you can see, I trimmed this this India hen and I trimmed all those furry fuzzy feathers off. Uh, it's a personal preference thing. I like this fly to have more of a clean look than a fuzzy kind of head like that. So by all means if you want to tie it and leave some of that fluff in up front, um, please do so. And then next I'm just going to kind of pull all those fibers out. 
pull them back. I'm going to pinch it from the top and bottom then the sides and make sure we have a good little thread base right in front. And that just gives a little more profile, a little bit of something extra, more movement when this fly is in the water. So next for the collar, I'm going to grab my Cohen's Carb Dub and Northern Lights again and try and grab a small clump with no rubber. Just do a simple little dubbing noodle here. And the good thing about this fly is it's really simple and it's really cheap. It doesn't take much to tie. It's not very complicated. It's really basic, but it's all, it also looks really good when you're fishing it. So I'm just going to start by making that small collar there. Get a little bit more to wrap it through the eyes and cover up some of that work. And I'm going to try and make this as thin as possible. Just do a couple X wraps and then once I'm here, I am going to whip finish. We are almost done. And we'll nip that there. And then what I'll do next is grab my Danville's Denier in more of a, a burgundy red to create the hot head on this fly. As you can see, we have a red theme going. So I'm just going to tie that in right in front of the eyes there behind the, high, behind the eye of the hook. Take a couple wraps back towards the eye and then grab our whip finisher again. Come through. And depending on how big you want it, you can do one or two whip finishes. That looks good for that. Trim out some of these extra fibers here. One more quick little brush. And this guy's ready to go. So like I said, super easy, super quick cart fly. Pretty standard black leech pattern. Um, but it does have that nice little red accent up on the head and back towards the tail, so it's a super effective fly.